In the first half of 2021, I reviewed this device here. This is the Genki Shadowcast, and it is designed to allow you to go ahead and play HDMI equipped game consoles through pretty much any computer. That's right. So you don't need an elaborate capture card. You don't need expensive equipment. All that you needed in theory was this here. And this is something I actually did back their Kickstarter for. And when we did our review earlier this year of this guy, well, I was highly disappointed. There was a lot of lag in it. It did not feel like a finished project as far as a Windows experience was concerned. Now they did have a recommendation at the time to either use a Mac, which is what they did their development on, and they've admitted as much since then, or to use their Chrome browser plugin. Now, since the launch of this, I've reached out to them and they've been gracious in their responses and have owned up to the fact that, you know, they did their development on a Mac. They didn't think PC would be that big of an issue, and it is. Um, it's pretty much unusable, or at least it was unusable. Even using the Chrome plugin, there was so much latency, lag, and delay on it, I really could not recommend this, at least for Windows users. They have now recently updated and uploaded a new version of firmware, which we have flashed to this. I will have a link to where you can download that firmware down in a pinned comment. So if you have one of these and you've been as disappointed as I am, it's a way for you to go ahead and try to see if this would be an improvement for you. Now, getting this out of the way as well, I know a lot of people would say, well, use an HDMI splitter. No, that is not what this was designed to do. This was designed to play and capture everything on your laptop screen, on your desktop screen. It was essentially designed to use your computer's display as a monitor. That's the way it's designed. If I'm gonna bypass it and use an HDMI splitter to go to my TV here, then why do I need this? I have a regular capture card, my Hapog PVR60 Pro, that I can do that with. I got that for the convenience of being able to play and capture on my laptop. So we've already updated the firmware on this guy here. We're gonna go ahead and connect it to multiple systems of ours. We're gonna try Super Back to the Future 2 here on our Super Famicom coming out of our RetroTank 5X and some other systems too, just to see how they play. Let's get started. Up first, Super Back to the Future Part 2 uh, for the Super Famicom. This is a game we just recently featured that I uh, got. We are gonna go ahead and start one thing I wish I could do, uh, and I'm not running this through like OBS or anything like that, where you know I'd like to have my camera on so you could see me as I'm going ahead and playing. Also, I am recording the audio going straight into my computer using my wireless lapel uh, microphone that I normally use. I'm not thrilled with the overall audio quality. I mean, this is such a great looking game. I will say overall, uh, not feeling as much lag as what there was originally. Such a bright, colorful game. I mean, this is just something that, uh, I mean, I would hope that Retro Rick would have this as much of a fan of the series as he is. Oh, not quite. Now, one thing I have noticed on here at least already when starting some games, it's like the, um, like it has to speed up or catch up in the processing where initially, whoa, I don't remember cops shooting at Marty in the second movie, um, but it does look a little bit blurry initially. Whoa, we'll try one more time here. There you could see it was kind of blurry when the level started and uh, it, it did catch up to it. Save the clock tower! Save the clock tower! You know, great and colorful game, and like I say, it actually is performing pretty well. So, uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to switch up and we're going to now play the NES. It's our HDMI modded NES. So for this, I'm actually recording twice. I'm going through my Hapog PVR 60 Pro, and I'm also going through my uh, the the shadow cast here. So let's see what we can get in Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Now the interesting thing about this is the fact that I am, um, you know, like I say, capturing twice. So I don't know if that's going to have any negative impact 
on the overall quality of what we're dealing with. So here we go into round number one. And the main thing we're looking for here is lag latency delay. This is actually pretty good. I mean, Glass Joe is not the most difficult opponent here, so there is that as well to, to kind of keep in mind. Now, I don't know if this complicates things or not, uh, but I am using my wireless Hypercan uh, Scout Controller. And I mean, it's working just fine. Now, I am feeling, I mean, it's not flawless, I will say that much. I am feeling some lag and delay here, so it's it still could use some improvement. Um, it's not as good as playing through a CRT, I will tell you that right now. It's not as good as playing through a regular flat panel television. I will say the colors look good. Everything looks and sounds great, I think. The, the only thing is just having a little bit of that lag and delay in here. Um, you know, the fact that I got punched there by Glass Joe is kind of a, uh, kind of an insult here. All right, so there we have Punch Out. It's okay, not great. I would say not quite as bad as the NES Classic Edition. Uh, definitely better than that. So I have switched over from Prefer Resolution to Prefer Performance, just to see if it performs any differently. And this is a ROM hack of RC Pro-Am that our good friend John Riggs put together. And I got this from him um, at the Southeast Game Exchange. Dang it, I always hit the first, uh, the B button wrong to begin with. You know, this is a terrific ROM hack. I know John didn't do the hack himself. Um, but the fact that it's out there, yes! Oh no! Well, I didn't come in last. We'll try one more um, to see what it, uh, how it does here. All right, got a good start. So the one thing on this hack is the fact that the water is black, as is the oil slicks. Um, kind of makes it hard to tell what's what. All right, uh, OJ Pro-Am looked good, played good. So now we've moved over to the Switch, and I do see a more grainy image here, I will say. It doesn't look as sharp uh, on my display. What can we play really quick? Yeah, it just doesn't look as vibrant, I will say. You know, we're going to go to Street Fighter because that's always a great test to see how lag, latency, delay, things along those lines work. Oh, Ryu versus Fei Long. I'm able to pull off the moves, pretty much. I mean, that worked pretty much flawlessly. I mean, I took a, a slight hit there from Fei Long at the beginning, but as you can see, mostly undamaged through that. We'll try one more time. I was able to pull off the Dragon Upper Cup a couple of times. Ooh. See if we can get him again. Got him! There we go. Not a problem whatsoever. We are going to stick with 2D Fighters to finish this off, and we are going to try out Joy Mech Fight that we recently got from Mr. Maynard. All right, and last up, this is Joy Mech Fight, and uh, this is that Mr. Maynard sent to us. I have never played before, and I'm really looking forward to checking it out. It's interesting the way that uh, you basically have no body. It's almost like early versions of Miis. Music is good, I gotta say that, and it's really colorful. I'm digging the color and everything. Ah, uh, we lost the first round. 
I'm basically just button mashing at this point. Ooh. I like that move. Next fall wins it. Ooh, didn't get him that time. Oh, this is close. Oh, and he got me. All right, this is actually really fun. So what do I think of this to begin with? So it is an improvement. Um, oh, we're still going. Is it first one to three falls then? Um, it, it is definitely an improvement over the original firmware. Um, and it's, I really wish this is what the system would have would have shipped with, or, or the, the adapter would have shipped with. Oh, he's kicking my rear end now. Oh, now he got me. Um, yeah, overall, a uh, huge improvement. This is actually something now that I will use from time to time, where before it had been sitting in the box, unused, absolutely terrible. I think the pictures look great and everything. The audio is terrific. Um, it still does have some lag, but it is now playable and usable. Let's go ahead and wrap things up. So what do I think of the new firmware? It is better. It is most definitely better. It's mostly playable. There is still a lot of room for improvement, however, and something that I really hope Genki takes to heart and continues to improve and evolve as time goes on. This is an exciting idea, but I think from a hardware standpoint, they've limited themselves a little bit, and here's why I say that. This is actually designed around a USB 2.0 architecture. That means it's using a slower overall speed to connect the device to your computer. If it had a USB 3.0 or USB-C as the default, I mean, it comes with a USB-C connection on the back of it. Why is it not set up to use USB-C? I kind of wish it was. But these are just my opinions. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Now, if you do have any other comments or questions, as always, you can also feel free to email me at rocksolidmail at gmail.com. You can send me a message on Twitter at Rocksolid Studios. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash Productions and Instagram at instagram.com slash GK. If you want to order one of these, I will actually have a link down below in a pin post where you can pick one of these up too. Um, like I say, at least for PC, it still has some room for improvement. Um, now, if you are looking for any other retro or modern gaming accessories, games, movies, and more, check out castlemaniagames.com. The cool thing over there, if you use promo code ROCKSOLID10, you can save 10% off of most items on the website. And he has a convenient feature for products $50 and up, where you can actually pay in four convenient payments. So let's say that you're looking at one of those awesome SCART or component video switchers from G-SCOMP and G-SCART, you can go ahead and do that and pay for it over time in four convenient payments. If you like what you see here and if you want to see more, do me a huge favor too. Hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. That way each and every time we upload new content, you're kept the most informed and up to date. And if you're looking for more content on like what we do to capture the types of systems that we use, how we clean and organize our wiring here, how we got our hands on Joy Mac Fight, Mac Joy Fight, Joy Fight Mac, this guy back behind me. Anyways, those videos are coming up for you right now. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to support the future of Rocksolid Productions, you can do so by visiting our Patreon page at patreon.com slash rocksolid. For as little as a dollar a month, $12 a year, you'll get early access to all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. You can also become a channel member here on YouTube for as little as $1.99 a month. And with that, you get a badge next to your name when you comment or post on the channel, and you are acknowledged whether you are a channel member or a Patreon supporter at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also support the channel by visiting our Teespring store on screen now, where we have t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, masks, cell phone cases, and much more. Again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.